What is up, all you hooligans? Thank you for tuning in to the Taylor Price Podcast. This episode's intro music is brought to you by my guest and friend, Jordan Anthony. I need you guys all to click the link tree in the description to go support my friend Jordan. He is a wonderful creator, a great artist, and he makes really hilarious YouTube videos. He went to the Minnesota State Fair and interviewed everybody that he could find and accidentally ran into Chet Holmgren. We're going to have to talk about that on a future podcast. But thank you guys again for tuning into the Taylor Price Podcast. And the intro music is brought to you by my guest today, Jordan Anthony. Hey Taylor, Taylor Price, my guy. Guys, I told you I don't. Once we move into the baseball yeah. field, you lose <laughs> yeah. me, bro. I, 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 my man, my family grew up watching all the sports, and I just kind of tapped out of baseball. I don't and know. That's I played funny. a little when I was a kid, but did you? You played little league, though. Yeah, a little okay. league. I played t ball. Okay. Uh, played a <laughs> little bit of baseball. I know the plays, but just like the league itself. Yeah. Just like, dude, I don't, I don't understand any of it. Yeah, that's that's one of those things where, like, now that I'm able to educate other people, I'm definitely going to do that. So, yeah. uh, but welcome to the Taylor Price Podcast. You can see our socials over here. This is Jordan Anthony. This is my what coworker, do, guys? my yeah. coworker, bro. But he's also a music producer and somebody who I uh, I admire very much in this space, in the creative space, because I cannot do music, even <laughs> though I sing. Like, I can sing, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been working on music for a while um yeah my name is jordan anthony nice to meet you guys um thank you for having me taylor yeah no um, problem thanks for I, being on your first yeah. podcast ever yeah, yeah. I, this is he was just asking me a while ago a second ago um i told him that i have a buddy that has a podcast he said wow how did i end up with being the first one to have you on and honestly i think it's just his persistence he's very passionate about what he wants to do and he's always talking about some ideas um i'm a very passionate person and for somebody who's been kind of creatively MIA, I've been very inspired by Taylor to just get back into prioritizing my creative drive. So doing stuff like this is right aligning with where I want to be and collaborating collaborating with other creatives for sure. I appreciate um, that so much yeah, because, no uh, I mean, I will say I got inspired by another coworker of ours. Yeah. Mike was the one who initially got me back into Mike's it. Mike's great too. All right, and Mike's listening great. to the, the yeah. Minnesota Mike podcast, another shout out as yeah. well. Because shout out to Mike. Yeah, dude, he, he really does do a great job, and I, I love listening to his takes on sports. He's a, he's a very calm presence, and, yeah, I, and I love for sure. that. And he's the workhorse at our bank. I mean, yeah. uh, we're not going to say what bank we work at. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, we definitely have a great crew over there, and yes. I think that's what's fostered such a fun yeah. environment for us. It's great because we all are kind of involved in something outside of work or, yeah. or have like yeah. a certain – drive to do something you know what i mean absolutely and it's it's great because i mean we're all kind of in the same age group um yeah. but it's it's it, either way older or younger i think we all connect and it's a great energy um for it, sure we have a lot of young like managers and i think what is cool about the environment that we have mm -hmm. is that a lot of people are, are trying to learn from each right. other um you're in the spot where i get to teach you but then you get to teach me some stuff as well because right. you're going to be learning the newer stuff that they that they change. Yeah, that's something that we uh you know you grow with that with like on YouTube with content creating like I've been learning from Kev Brado because that dude in the YouTube space has already established himself. So right. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna ask him all the time like, right. hey, does this thumbnail look good? Like, which right. thumbnail should I use? That's the best way to um. I mean, we were talking about this together too a couple of weeks ago at work, but um, that's the best way to kind of shape and and, and develop your your platform is to look at someone who's already kind of d did what you want to do and it, it's just like a template really yeah um yeah there's nothing wrong with a little bit of copy and paste as long as you put your own twist on it and integrate your own personality into your yeah. platform like the, i know there's creators out there who are you know following the trends and it's cool to get through the algorithm that way but um 
I think that nevertheless, you should also put your own twist on it so you're a recognizable channel. Yeah. People can come back to you for a certain reason. Well, I want my personality <clears throat> as well to speak for itself. Yeah. I mean, that's the hardest thing I think with YouTube is is how do you how do you create your voice? Like what is going to, you know, hit home with most people? And uh, right. I don't want to foster a community that is also like toxic. I mean, yeah. That is that is the worst thing sure. in the world. We've yeah. seen that. But then I don't want to mislead people. I mean, the Logan Pauls of the world, the Jake yeah. Pauls of the world, doing all this all these crypto scams and stuff like that. Right. Like heck no. I'm no. like I'm not about that. So yeah. um but with, with that being said, I want to I have a I have a I had something I wanted to talk about. Sure, for I sure. I did I did write a bunch of stuff down that we had to talk about. Most I mean, stuff. I also have some quotes from you from work. So okay. I mean, I could. Be, oh my god! I could also no. Read those to the world. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Put it <laughs> well, on me, bro. Well, so <laughs> both of us we work with some pretty funny people, but yeah. I mean, it's funny. I have a note in my in my notes here that's funny things my coworkers say. And my man, my man Jordan made the list. So um, I'm not even gonna rem- remember when I said this. I just know I said it, but I you, no you said it in the midst of like between trainings and something. <laughs> he like wrote that. down the day, the time. Oh, I didn't every- do that. He's like, it was Tuesday. The <laughs> I should. I really should start at twelve oh nine p.m. <laughs> yeah, I should be like star date these. Star date these. Uh, yeah. Quote unquote: The public internet has everything. The public internet. Okay, I okay. I testify that I feel like. Yeah. We were talking about something on gotta, the internet. Got to testify. Okay, and <laughs> and I believe I th- I don't know what the topic was, but I just I wanted to make a point that things on the internet um, are pu- like are public like nowadays. Like you know everything that we that we that we see is all public. So Absolutely. say 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 something happens in the world. And and you're not affected by it back in the day because like you never heard about it. Now the internet is like this outlet where everyone can chime in on one specific thing. Yeah, yeah. And now it's a perception of like a demise. You know what I mean? I mean, like, when you elaborate the sentence and you break it down. Yeah. Like so, I wanted. To, I, you, I wanted you're very to, deep. But when yeah. You say it when you just look at it. It, face it, it was so vague when I said it. Yeah. The public internet. It made a lot of sense in my head. But yeah. but basically, the consensus is yeah. Like it, we all see a car crash that happened somewhere on the you know it's somewhere in a random state online now we assume that you know the world has bad drivers but what about like back in the 90s when there was no internet and you never heard about certain things outside of your city or this that and the third like i mean news has always been around but oh, i think the the general rule is that we have too much access to information these days and it's just yeah it's so influential. <laughs> it's it's come it so, comes from every source that we look yeah. at too. It's almost like every app that we have yeah. also is like, oh yeah, did you hear about this? Yeah, it's like I don't know. Yeah, so uh, I also have a Matilda theory. I don't know if I've told you about this. Matilda, I like that movie. You remember that movie? It's yeah, a great movie, it's right? Great Danny movie. DeVito. And they did a remake just recently, didn't they? Did they? Yeah, there's a remake uh, I, on I like Netflix or something. I definitely don't want to see it because the first yeah. Matilda was so good. I don't know if it's a show or what, but yeah. but I have a theory. That Matilda is, she's actually a Jedi. Because if you think about it, she can move things with her mind. Okay. And, and that alone already says that she's got the, the triglycerins or whatever the heck are sure. in her blood system. Sure. But that also means that Danny DeVito is too. Because how does, how does Matilda become a Jedi without his, her dad being a Jedi? Hmm. Let me ask you this. Is, is that not just an adaptation of telekinesis? Like, in general. I mean, we are, and we are, but we are talking about space cowboys with, with laser swords. True, true. But, I mean... Because if you take the concept of telekinesis, that's pretty much what Star Wars grew, like, grew off of. I mean, obviously, okay. like, 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 lightsabers and stuff is, like, their own thing. But, like, I think that you're on the money. It's just the fact that she might just be a straight... <laughs> Like she what, might be a fucking Jedi, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. She, she, she might actually be without a Jedi. the sabers, without the space like involved, without the. I mean, she could be. That's what I'm under at, the table. That's what I'm saying. That's a theory Straight that up. I have, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> she could potentially. I mean, Danny DeVito, and it would be just funny to see Danny DeVito in like It's Always Sunny, yeah. just because if you're the theory is if you're in one show as a cartoon character, right. and you're in another one, you're in that universe. Yeah. And if yep. that if that's if that theory proves true, if he if Danny DeVito was in one movie and he's in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, sure. that means that he means could, two movies are in the same universe. That in, means Luke Skywalker could be closely related to Danny DeVito in 
It's always sunny. Dude, how did you come up with... All that came from me just writing down Matilda th- theory. She's a Jedi. She's a Jedi. There's literally three notes on here. Two <laughs> notes on here. There's like, that's the end of the summary. That's it. She's a Jedi. That means Danny DeVito is too. <laughs> Case closed. I, <laughs> I can't mic, mic drop this one, but <laughs> I would if I could. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I felt like that was... Um, uh, one of my better theories. That's a good movie, though. A lot of people would have no idea what you're talking about. You got the right guy on here for that. A hundred percent. And now this is one that I wish I, I wish I had thought of, but this was Kenzie. This is a hundred percent Kenzie. Okay. Uh, Kenzie's our coworker as well. Uh, and I'm gonna have to censor the second word of this. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what you're about to say. She's talking about white Gatorade. What do you think she could infer? About white Gatorade. Let's, um, just, let's just be honest. No here. comment. Um, she called it the cum colored Gatorade with a little extra salt. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kenzie, I could hear her saying that, dog. I'm never going to look at that drink the same. First of all, I don't. I don't drink Gatorade, let alone the white Gatorade. Weird Flex Gatorade. Um, <laughs> Weird Flex. Powerade could never. I don't think you, they have. You know, the white cherry. They have a white cherry one. Oh, you damn. didn't know about I the don't. white Powerade. That's okay. All right. That's okay. I know That's about okay. white Gatorade. I don't know about what white Powerade. White but Powerade. The, I'm yeah. not putting any white drink don't say it too in slow. my mouth don't say white power i'm not putting too any slow. white liquid in my mouth okay. i don't believe that that would suit my mouth very well. uh, okay <laughs> say it to the camera say it, say it to the camera <laughs> i don't believe white liquid <laughs> do not say should go in my don't say white powerade slowly white Powery. Don't don't say it. <laughs> Wait, it's where it's where you put the emphasis in it. Honestly though, bro. You gotta say it quick if you're gonna say it with a flavor that you're white drinking. power aids? Just say white power aid. Take out the aid part. White man. power Thank you. <laughs> it took you a second. I love you, bro. Bruh. <laughs> you have to like tug my mind in that direction because naturally i don't think like I know. that obviously i'm a little more desensitized yeah i can tell and that's okay i ride that line i'm like i'm okay with that <laughs> oh my god i've always been that way oh my god i when I, I told you i used to be a liar when i was a kid so nowadays i just try to tell the truth but sure that means that when like forcefully all that bullshit happens like i can see it plain as day it sounds like a lot of internal conflict you got going on there well man. it's not internal anymore <laughs> it's out it's it's, it's all external yeah i argue a lot you, obviously you get the argumentative goosebumps yeah have you seen have you seen me oh uh, true I, I i could be i could be an you and christy would be 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 tugging on She's some like strongly my, worded debates they're man. like my sisters they like, seriously are and like, like that's how i would talk to a sister and you like, t- one thing about people with strong strong opinions which i consider you and christy and kenzie to be yeah are it's a it's a it's a dangerous zone for headbutting yeah and so you take a concept that you are strongly opinionated about and she might be as well but on the opposite side of the argument yeah i mean i try my best to like i i gotta be able to see the whole picture and sometimes i do get narrow-minded and sure. I'm okay with that. It's just that I got to be able to realize it. Well, that's what happens when you care so much about a certain... Oh, I'm, I'm a passionate yeah, dude. I mean... You I, get so involved Watching with the it. game that you can see here, the highlights I was watching, like, even that, like, still gives me a heart attack. Yeah. I mean, the, yesterday was a great day Crazy. in sports. I mean, especially Crazy. for the Vikings, but also we watched some UFC last night. I met mm-hmm. I met Joey and Austin. Yep. To, to one. Dude, those dudes are cool as fuck. Jo- Joey and Austin are two of my closest friends, man. I mean, you'll meet the other guys, but um, we all grew up together, went to Burnsville, um, went to, um, grew up in that area, and I think that ultimately, like, we just decided to stay connected after high school. None of us yeah. really did college, and I mean, yeah, except for Austin. Yeah, Austin ended up going, but... um. He, yeah, because Austin is in college right now at Cato, but like yeah. that, that's that's crazy to me. Like, yeah. I, it was we talked about that last night. How like it was instilled in us to yeah, like go to college our entire right. lives. Like, I was told I was gonna be like a ditch digger if I didn't. Yeah, well, to be honest, bro, 
they highlight so much about this image of college and all you know uh, when you think of college and you're a kid you you think of like university yeah you don't think of these like subsidiary colleges or like these no. uh, these alternatives or anything the idea is to be all in you know a social structure like high school yeah. and middle school and when you find out that that's not a guarantee it kind of diminishes the like I mean, for me, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, yeah. someone, I'm not saying I wanted to go to college just for friendship, but I feel like like having that social structure outlet is a great way to get that, through That is an, a huge advertisement, yeah. basically. And like, yeah. you're going to go to college because your friends go to college. Right. So you fail the ACT and you've got all this division going on between who's going, who's not, where you're going, where you get accepted. It's just... For me, it was too much. By the time I went to college, it was like Normandale, bro. And it was yeah. like, okay, even that was... It, was, it wasn't it was that bad. It was actually better than I expected, but still not what I wanted. There's still some, like, high school... I want to say that there's still some high school, like, aspects to community yeah, college. Because, sure. like, there's still the clickiness. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're at a four-year college, you, there's so many people. You're able to reinvent yourself. Because even if you see people you know... Mm-hmm. which i did it's mm-hmm. not like they i had any classes with them they were none of them were interested in the shit i was interested in right none of them were exactly. outgoing enough to be on like to try to be on the radio program or right. anything like that so it was it was easy for me to like make my own friends and like kind of like just restart yeah but did i have to spend 30 grand a year to do that no yeah. and i could have learned all that stuff on my own and the fact that they still try to shove books down your throat so- is, is so annoying. I was lucky enough to have be a part of the FAFSA grant. Um, the, just with me being, I guess, I don't know what all the prerequisite like prerequisite um, qualifications are, but I know that something about my mom being like a single mom. Oh yeah. Certain incomes, like you know, certain um, like uh, economic like hardships and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, when when I went, it it was cool because you would get these reimbursements that would hit your account from yeah. just yeah. i guess not like there's a budget from from what right. your what your what your what your tuition is covering and what your books are covering and then they send you the rest they send you the reimbursement for the di- di- the difference yeah. and um it was cool because like they had a whole cafeteria where obviously you'd have to spend real money but um you could use like, your you like could use your reimbursements for like so for the first like I guess semester I was eating good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like I would get those reimbursements weekly for like uh, well, every couple weeks for the first semester and it was I was just eating like pasta, pizza, like Bro, they the the lit. college pizza is very yeah, good. It was so good. Like that's one thing that Normandale gets right is like they they might be a community college, but they're the community college. It's like you don't want to consider anyone else because they have like a lot of that college feel. Right. And I I really really re- really wish that they would offer like on site like stuff like but like they don't. So yeah. yeah, yeah. It's 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 a oxymoron when you think about it. Like how you think that with all these with all these tools and with all this money that these colleges have, that they'd be able to provide all that stuff for you. But no, it's like not even a week ago. I got, I got an email from the alumni program asking me for a donation. I'm like all that tuition money I gave you, you spent it. Well, there's another theory that, well, it's not really a theory, but it's, there's another, um, what would you call that? It's, it's known that, that just like banks, operate as businesses colleges actually have very very similar um business yeah they have like a um, similar business model model. yeah Yeah. like they 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 have this like like this inclusion of like everyone who attends obviously pays money so that's kind of like a member at a credit union and then you have the professors which are employees right or like the managers kind of it's just very it's very college is business it's yeah. a business and so i mean high schools are too i guess but they're more community based colleges are very 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 unless you're going to somewhere specific that's like an hbcu or somewhere that's like super community organized colleges are not very they're they and that's no nothing against them but like it's just they just the don't have the resources yeah. to kind of match that 
I mean, Winona State was such a big school. I was lucky. Yeah. But, like, did I maximize my usage of all the resources? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Like, the $1.5 million gym Mm. is getting used by the freaking basketball and volleyball teams. Like, it's not going to get used by the students as much as it is going to be used by the student athletes. And so when I tried to become one, it was just one of those, like, well, I hope I get to use it. Because, I don't know, hitting golf balls indoors sounds like a lot of fun. Sure. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know if you, I don't, I wouldn't say you missed out on the college experience to be honest. Cause like what you have I with your friends on... is, is definitely the similar experience. Like yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like you, maybe you missed out on some parties, but from, from our talks, it sounds like you got that anyways. Like, so. yeah, I mean, I went to some part. I would, the thing about me and I'm going to give you a little background of like my school, like, I guess, um, like popularity level or whatever would you call that? Like where I, yeah, I guess like your social status, social status straight up. So, yeah. I was, and I considered myself and was probably considered as well to be like a new kind of, like a new kind of like popular. Um, And what I mean by that is like not your traditional, like you're a jock, you're, you're like, you do something extracurricular in the school and that makes you well known. I, our generation was like the waking age of like what we know to be like the internet now right you know like right. social media like so ar- amongst that i i became like an influencer so i on facebook vine was popular as you know what at the time yeah it was very popular i, I took my creative like intuition and started making these funny videos on facebook which would go viral which would hit a lot of different like people's pages and faith in, in where we live and and across like the country and i promise you like i could pull you up i got a video that has five hundred thousand views from 2014 Damn. just of me just uh, and that's just one video that's just, right and right. this is not a flex so i swear to you if my mom was here she would tell you that from the age of like 13 years old right to like 18 years old i would go to the mall i would go to public places that you know and people would stop me for pictures. They would, you know, I was known to be what was called Facebook famous. And this is not a flex, like a couple hundred likes. This was like, I was, I was really, I was really hitting it. So eventually, by the time high school came around, I was pretty well known. Yeah. And I could pretty much hang out with whoever I wanted. I wasn't your typical, okay. you're in this friend group, you're in that friend group. I had my own friend group and we would, I guess, like, we were the out, we were the outline we were the we were the outsiders dude we okay we, you okay. know we were like the the outsiders who were breaking like all of the normalities of what because you just wanted structures. to fit in with whatever group kind of like felt good at the time i guess well, well well yeah even though we had our own friend group and we had our own kind of like goofballish like image to us we were still super super like yeah. influential and like we had like style like we had like the, new, <laughs> like the newest drip like we had like this was us bro like we were different like when you when you see like how time is developing and you include that into like traditional high school social structure right like that what we were like influential yeah. i want to say because like people, people were probably copying you guys too I, they bro there are so many people who yeah. wanted to be like us or they be just like bite me your style just be like anyone that be in our friend group like it wasn't like we were hard and we would do initiation processes but it was like bro our our friend group ran off loyalty and yeah it kind of took it took time and trust like right. you gotta build that that was something that couldn't have been bro it there were so many there's so many fake people in high school and mm-hmm. i recognize that because so i got i got like famous at one school first right and then moved schools which in the middle of seventh grade sure. which is a death sentence mm. if you are a young kid and Mm -hmm. you have a bunch of friends Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you like move out in the middle of middle school Mm -hmm. unless you make the best impression of all time i've heard that yeah you're gonna you're gonna end up having the worst high school experience so by the time i got to high school i had uh, the only way i could survive was if i was like like a nomad Mm -hmm. like where like i was my own entity like where like i had friends like i had a kind of a solid friend group but like people who knew me knew me as like an athlete and then the people who I was friends with knew me as like somebody who was like a creative because mm-hmm. I was in like choir and yeah. I had played violin in the past and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a great way to transition. Right. Um, and it's almost the only way in yeah. like high school. Like I think that in a similar way, 
I had those connections. I, I like I mentioned, I was kind of acceptable in other friend groups because not only was I like this dude on the internet who made funny videos and made everyone laugh. That's I think a unified thing. But yeah. also, I I was a little bit of an athlete towards the end of high school. Um, I ran track, and in the beginning of middle school, I did basketball. So people yeah. knew me to be like this person who would do athleticism every now and then. Okay. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I was the gym tryhard because I played sure. sports too. Like for me, right. like we would. I mean, I was good at sports. I'd right. play basketball up until my junior year, and yeah. then baseball from eighth grade up until my senior year I was playing up in high school Mm -hmm. so like everyone knew me as a baseball player obviously I came from a baseball school so it was a little it was a little easy for people to be like oh yeah he's good at that Mm -hmm. but like they didn't care right that school didn't care about that they wanted you to play football and I didn't play football because I don't know I had too many concussions and I had recognized that even as a young kid like when people didn't recognize like your brain starts your brain chemistry changes yeah. after you get knocked out a few times. Mm. So I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to stick to what I am good at. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, that ruffled people's feathers. It's easy to try things in to get good at those things that you're trying, but still not feel connected to it. Yeah. I mean, we would play football in gym class. And trust me, I played I played football in my backyard right. all the time. Right. We actually, and my brother could attest to this, we would my dad and us like we spray painted football lines in our backyard one year just so that we could play backyard football with our friends right and we would do that all the time we'd play baseball in the front yard like we would play basketball in the street like so like sports always came natural but like when you don't play the sport that other people want you to play somehow it ruffled people's feathers yeah i can bro i can like relate to that so much because like i mentioned like my first my first sport was baseball, and then basketball was, like, very shortly after that, and then track was much later in high school. But it's not that I'm not athletic. It's not that I don't like being athletic. It's just the fact that I think my my my, my intuition was calling me elsewhere. Right. And I think that in this, is since we're on the topic of, like, social structure and, like, traditional school friend groups and, and acceptance groups, I think it's so much pressure to be involved in extracurricular activities, but I always felt this bounding energy in in, in almost like a question within me, like why aren't there more outlets for kids to do what they want? Like, like support groups or like there was, there, there was like, you know, there was clubs, but even the clubs were super specific. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be in drama. The video game club became the Yu-Gi-Oh club. Like they were only playing, they weren't playing video games. Come on now. Like I would, I would join this so that you guys would want to play like Halo with me. I had to search out the people that wanted to play Halo. It's like, come on. We need what we really, really needed. This would have sufficed. I promise you is a, a, a club or a group that dedicated itself to just supporting whatever the heck you wanted to do right it's gonna be it's just gonna be like an innovation club or like an intuition club like a self-development club like straight up and and i think today there are there's way more i bet you or like a career development club i promise you today like with all of this like diversity and inclusion that's the that 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 our generation is trying to spew out in in the younger um the younger i mean kids um, trying to be like more progressive and more um, themselves. This is probably an idea that would have like been way more popular today. But um, I, I definitely feel like that was so far far fetched when we were in high school. Um, even you know. Yeah. No. No. People didn't think about that stuff. No. Even 100%. like ten years ago, it would have just been too much. It's like you don't want to play basketball, you don't want to play sports, you don't want to be in one of our already established clubs, and you're like a no, like you're like a nobody. I mean, it, it even <laughs> takes it it it, like, it, it take it gets taken further on YouTube too because kids yeah. see like a famous YouTuber and they're like, well, I want to do that, but then they also want to play sports. But mm-hmm. it's like you have to have so much money to be able to do both. Mm-hmm. Like, and if you're unless your parents are like stinking rich, like, and then you have to also face the acceptance of your parents like well and and the, your youtube audience too because you're gonna have to accept failure yeah like if you want to post and like be successful like right. i think about that all the time like i'm gonna post videos and i know sometimes people aren't gonna watch right and that that's a failure to me but like i'm not gonna just delete every video that doesn't work out mm. because it hurts my ego yeah but like sure. i have to work through it right it feels like these kids 
are not going to be able to work through that if they if they rid themselves of that like they just protect themselves from from yeah um a lot a lot of kids they they make those decisions early on and i think that i was a part of that as well but um nowadays kids do a really good job of coming in and knowing exactly what they want and they stick to it i i'm inspired by the stick to itiveness that even like 13 to 14 15 16 yeah. year olds it's the influence it is the influence like if they want to be a youtuber they're dedicated to it there's just it's an oversaturation at yeah. this point like and i'm i'm a part of it like i've been a part of it though yeah like i was a youtuber in the past like doing gaming channel stuff only and like it was it was fun and like the only thing that like i remember about the old call of duty scene was just how fucking like how political it got like i'm a 13 right. year old kid and some dude hacked my channel and deleted it bro i could tell you about that bro that should that's just oh because he was mad that gosh. i hit 15 like or 1.5k and like back bro, then, I hit, oh hitting gosh. back in like 2013 back in or actually, sorry back in like 2010 mm -hmm. rather like back when modern for two was like about to come out hitting a thousand subscribers was like hitting 20,000 subscribers. No, for sure. Like it was like for a sure. big deal. And I hit 1.5 K and this dude hacked my channel and then deleted it. Just deleted everything. I'm going to tell you something exactly, exactly the same that happened to me. So I started off my YouTube channel career when I was about 10 years old, I was doing toy reviews. My name was Optimus 10 because I was obsessed. Oh, hell Optimus yeah. 10 because I was obsessed. Yeah. I was 10 years old. I was obsessed with Transformers the Transformers movie had came had come out um, a, a year or two prior to that, um, and I was just I was just gonna I was obsessed I was obsessed with everything that was a toy like everything that was an action figure Transformers, um, Iron Man, Marvel stuff, Spider Man stuff I was reviewing it. Then Beyblade made its reappearance, so that was the biggest thing. Beyblade um, Metal uh, uh, Metal Master something like that. Uh, I was obsessed with Beyblade. Beyblade was like huge for me too. Took like, my channel's niche and focused it all on holy Beyblade. Shit. Got got together with a few friends in my neighborhood. We started like making these Beyblade real life videos. We were the first ones to do that. I promise you God could take me if I'm lying. We were the <laughs> first ones to start the Beyblade real life in real life. So we we did these characters. We had our own characters that we made and we did these live action episodes. Bro, I want to watch uh, these. Uh, bro, they're gone. I'm going to tell you what happened. So the moral of the story is I got so popular. My my YouTube channel name became Didi May 43 cuz my mom's name is Deidre. She went by Didi. Her middle name is Marie. So Didi May is her nickname. Everyone, all her friends. Okay. And then she was 43 years old at the time. So I, I don't know. I just used hey, that. Back then, that's how you made your name. Bro, type in DD May 43 and you're going to see a bunch of search results. Not my channel, but people are going to just a bunch of videos challenging DD May 43 with my Beyblade. Because, they, you know, it was like a it was like a, you had power okay. like you. Like oh, my the response videos. The, like I respond, remember yeah, that. Yeah, like challenging, like challenging DD May 43 with my power, like challenging him with my Beyblade, challenging my Beyblade. My Beyblade is more powerful than his. Blah, blah, blah. Because I was I was also known to be this this myth that i kind of created and i Whoa. succeeded was this person who had the most powerful beyblade on on youtube bro and you I, just you just blew my fucking bro mind, i promise bro. you i was famous as shit just with beyblades like, that's bro, the shit i swear and and i i oh can attest my, my friend i have a friend who i grew up with doing these videos and he could attest if i called him right now yeah. If I caught him right now, he could say we were the guy, we were those guys. And I went, if I had to give you a subscriber count, my memory's like, it's man, I have no idea. But I want to go ahead and say, it had to be t uh, over ten thousand or more, bro. Subscribers, I promise you, I promise you. I'm on, I'm on the road to one k now, and I'm like trying to get back to that and getting ten thousand subscribers. The channel's even gone, back then bro. or even now, just just seems like so far fetched. Like I don't know why, but. Yeah, so there was this Hayden dude on on there that named Beyblader HD. He was he, Beyblader hate, HD, he still has his bro. video on there challenging my. He built my Beyblade with his own parts, and and basically and tried to embarrass me by making a video of his him putting his against mine. Then he basically made a fake account saying he could get me up. So this was before Google AdSense, obviously. Right. This was when you needed a partnership to get paid. Yeah. So he's like, Hey, I'm a representative. He sent me a, an email. 
He sent me an email. I'm literally 12 years old. I don't know how I didn't like see this coming. I'm so popping. I'm so euphoric with all the all the all the hype that's coming my way, and I'm just ready to go. I know that I'm there and I'm in YouTube partnership like territory, and so I'm basically just waiting at this point. I yeah. get an email from a YouTube partner. Excuse me, a YouTube partnership representative saying, hey, I'm a part of YouTube partnerships um, and I'm ready to and I've seen your videos and I'm ready to go ahead and bring you into the YouTube partnership um, platform. We want to get you paid this then third. It was a pretty well written email for him being a 12 year old as well. Um, <laughs> I, I get he's like, just reply to this email with your with your with your password. He's like, email. I got him with this one. With, Dad, can you with help your email check? password and your email, your YouTube email and password? And oh I give God. it to him, bro. And no, I, and, and in, within ten minutes, my account is like compromised, and and we all knew it was him. We all, it wasn't it was it, we all knew it was him. Fucking HD, fucking loser. Actually, actually, he actually he exposed that it was him. He wasn't even like hiding it. He's like, ha, ha, he I turned it into account. his second channel. It oh was called Beyblader HD, like two. What a something. loser, bro. So, bro, I'm 24 years old. I'll never forget this. I I don't hate you, but I just think that was Beyblader HD. I hate you. I just think I that, will say that to the camera. I just think that I was some him. shysty shit that you did to me, bro. I hate you. I think that was some shysty stuff you did to me, bro. That like, is some shysty if shit. You're, like, if, 100%. You, if you ever, like, I don't know, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well established these days. Like, if um, if you, you might have seen like my new content, my 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 music. If you follow me on Instagram, just know hey, I want I want to I want to talk fo- to you. You better follow his ass, and I will get you on this podcast, and I will. You owe him ten grand. I too, want I want him to <laughs> I want him. I just want to talk to him. Why were you such a hater at twelve? Oh, especially. Especially over Beyblades, like, like sh- bro, I was just popping, bro, and you wanted to like ruin it, bro. Yeah, you but ruined yeah, it. instead instead of being a hater, you could have capitalized on the content. Like mm-hmm. instead, he decided to be a like, hater. We could have linked up and did some, yeah, some some serious. Actually, I think he started off trying to be my friend, and did, I I think did I you just talk did. Shit? I didn't have no, I didn't talk mess, bro. But I was very persistent in my in my caricature because I was supposed like I was. You're supposed to be arrogant. Like I was this guy. Like so. So the Jenga was the main character of Beyblade. Um, this yeah. new. This what well, at the time was new. Um, this new Jenga. season. Jenga was like like the Beyblade like main character. And was so that season two. I was well. It, so. Or, or, You're thinking of original Beyblade. I'm talking about when they came out with those metal Beyblades, like oh, no um, Storm Pegasus and Rock. Um, oh, I miss, I Rock must have Leon. missed out on that. I must yeah. have missed out on that. If thing. I showed it to you, you'd re- you'd recognize. I it. probably would. But it was, I was a part of it. I was be- shortly before that. It was Bakugan. Bakugan was short lived yeah. because Beyblade came in and knocked them out the water. Bakugan got knocked out real quick. Real quick by Beyblade. So um, by the reemerging of Beyblade. But anyway, so I was. I my basically my channel's niche was me dedicating myself to being this image of a main character. Right. I main characterized myself, and <laughs> there, the, the 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 you created your own mythos, bro. Like I I literally had a fan base like surrounding me being the main character. Well, I was the main character. You of were this also real life you were also so like 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 every anime protagonist yes. who has a little ego just kept bragging yeah. about how amazing I had to I had <laughs> to though. Amazing and he was pressed. Was I was won't mad, lie. I, I did a great job of of creating this image of the main character, the most powerful wielder of of Beyblade everything. I wasn't mean about it, but I was like I, I mean, we would run Tiny Chat um, webinars, so I would host these Tiny Chat. You remember Tiny Chat? Yeah. We would run these Tiny Chat webinars with me and my friends who were the Beybladers, and they would ask us questions. I'm we surprised would, Tiny Chat bro, even made we, it to you. Bro, we basically, we basically had our own podcast webinar situation going on. But with, 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 with Tiny with Chat. With text. Yeah, yeah with that text. Is and like, and our, my, my, my webcam would sometimes give like faulty like audio and stuff. So, so wait, 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 wait. Were you guys talking shit to each other during this? No. Oh, there was, this was more like join our web, join join our tiny chat group, join our tiny chat like uh, what would you call that like um, group? So it's just like uh, a big this, group chat. Uh, yeah, at this time where we'll we'll talk about how you guys felt about the new episode we posted, or how you guys talk about how you guys feel about the new videos that we posted. So would they like, and they would comment and be like, "Hey, like, the, love your videos, okay. love lo- love your love the new Beyblade real life episode." Love, uh, hey, I got a question. Um, how Wait, did you build your Beyblade? Like what 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 parts do you recommend on yeah, me build? Yeah, like yeah. cuz there were like stamina tips, there were like dr- like there were like um attack att- att- attack tips that would help like 
the Beyblade move across the stadium faster and like attack harder. Bro, I'm putting a magnet in mine so it'll yeah, go yeah, after yours, it, bro. No, there was well, the thing is there were like there was like balance drives so you could have a be- like more stamina. There was it, it was a lot of different bro. technicalities that went into it, and so we would run these tiny chat like group um, chats and. There would be active live questions and join, people joining. And I think one day he joined and he was like, hey, can I be in your group? And I was like, hey, we're not taking any new. Like, bro, he took and, that bro, personally. He dedicated himself to, to fucking trying to ruin me, bro. It was an, the most annoying thing ever. Cause so it was when he deleted your thing. channel, that was his, or not even deleted, took over your channel. Yeah. He did an evil fucking takeover. Mm-hmm. He deleted all my videos. He posted a, he posted like a, like a, like a, like a, what, this, what was that called like a mo- windows movie maker oh, like text type video like, like this hey guys is, this is my new channel hey guys hey guys dd may 43 is no longer the owner of this channel i'm the new owner of Beyblade Rage. back like, then you could like take channels like people would give channels to you and shit like that i did horrible, i received a halo reach channel from a guy and then i just never touched it after it like I, I used it for like a few things and i was like eh, whatever bro it was so easy to get hacked it was so easy that's insane yeah. bro i feel i feel for you yeah i really so. do i've i've been i've been scammed in runescape too okay i don't know if you ever played runescape I've, i know i have friends that have yeah but like this dude told me he was gonna give me membership mm. and all of a sudden my account's gone yep it happened a lot yep it happened a lot on xbox it happened a lot on playstation Happened a lot on YouTube. I think it was Happened because the dude everything. wanted my my gamer tag in mm-hmm. thing because mm-hmm. I had. That was a big deal. Yeah, people mm-hmm. had. I had the gamer tag most of the time that people wanted. I don't know why, but mm-hmm. like ever since I was like uh, a kid, like even on Xbox, like we were always trying to have like a cool gamer tag. Right. And even when, even when we had like a, a clan, like mm-hmm. when people would, and you shouldn't have a bunch of white dudes saying that they're in a clan. It's just a team. Mm-hmm. Six little kids that want to play Call of Duty together. Well, so, nowadays they run tournaments and shit. Like there's well, right. real live tournaments like that. But back then, when you were a pub stomper with your friends mm-hmm. and like you didn't know anything about that, you guys would change your name all to this like similar things. Like right. me and my cousins would do that. And I talked about this with my brother on the podcast. He got he kind of got he got set up kind of bad. Like we gave him, we were doing uh like playing cards and he got he got queen. So we kind of set him up kind of bad. We we fucked him up big time on that one. Tricey, bro. But look, we didn't try to. Like we were, <laughs> I had the choice between queen and a ten, and I was like, well, I wanted the king. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get that. I didn't get ace. That kind of sucks. So I'm gonna take ten, and that became my like my baseball number. So I don't know. I felt bad for my brother, but then we ended up doing like <laughs> Mario Brothers. Yeah. And he was like Koopa or okay. something, and yeah. I was like King Boo. Mm-hmm. So like we we balanced it out after that. Okay. But then this dumbass changed his name to Slap a Ho times two. Oh my god. And he got banned in my my sweaty thighs. <laughs> <laughs> when you can re- the best part back then is my brother's account was tied to my dad's email. Oh my god. So when he when he got banned, he my dad got the message like, "Hello, Slap a Ho X two. <laughs> slap Hello pimp pimp name slip back. Yeah, pimp name slip back." Times oh, no. two. That's so funny. Giving you the backhand. Honestly, though, that was the funniest thing when you would play with someone that had like a funny ass yeah. like gamer tag. It just made you want to either be friends with them or like kill them. Well, I mean, there's been so many iterations of like of similar things like that. Like when I would yeah. like play Call of Duty, even now, like there's so many people that have shitty gamer tags that are just old jokes, but like mm. everyone laughs. Like you're getting a gamer tag. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Your name's Slapple. Oh, Chief Slapple. Oh, and oh my it, gosh. it makes me feel great because like our, you know, we haven't changed very much. Yeah. But at the same, at the same, at the time, same time, I feel like the dawn of like gaming is kind of over. It it is but, becoming a lot more reacting on YouTube. Like yeah. gaming and commentary has to be so you have, your content has to be so good mm-hmm. like mr beast playing video games isn't as popular as mr beast doing like a fucking train running through a brick mm-hmm. wall like although he did video. come up one of his like emerging content styles was like minecraft wasn't it yeah he started out initially gaming like mm-hmm. i think most people did but then he realized quickly that like there's a lot more to YouTube, and it's a lot more about content creation. Mm-hmm. I think he's a very early visionary about like putting all your eggs in one basket, content creation creation wise. Meaning like you do whatever you can to make sure that the video itself mm-hmm. is like has that juicy content. Right. 
And that's the hardest thing to recognize is yeah. what is content and what isn't. He's got a lot of channels, man. He does, and all of them, all of them have like YouTube plaques, mm -hmm. meaning that like he independently knows how to grow. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a cool thing. Well, nowadays I wouldn't call it so much independent. They say that Mr. Beast runs a damn near like a production studio. Like a he, yes, his, his platform is a production company. That's what my essentially what I kind of wanted to do when I like went into college and yeah. like kind of started working in the production realm. Yeah, I thought about that. Like, how can I make these productions in my head possible? I would do. I did a documentary. I did. Uh, a few ads for like Yamaha and Suzuki and stuff like that. So like I got involved in like you, my work was on TV and stuff, you know, but it's like an in part type of thing. Whereas right. Mr. Beast has full control over everything that he, that you see. Like I have a good feeling that besides like the integrated ads, like every word of that, of that YouTube video is mm -hmm. like kind of pre-planned, not like scripted, but like he gets what he wants because he he like makes it possible. Mm -hmm. Not that he has Straight to up. buy it, but like he can he can talk his way into funding anything. I guarantee it. If you yeah. if you walked into a business right now, up to Chase right now, and he wanted to do an ad with them, they would bow at the knee. Well, honestly, because or bend at the knee or lay down. I don't give a fuck. With, with, do, with, with, with the influence that he's that he's developed on that platform on this platform, I I feel like he's one of his own to come through and host this channel that has his name his image but there's a driving powerhouse behind it that would not be able to that he would not be able to get to where he has gotten right he without does that. have a huge production team yeah. and like he's talked about that on podcast how like he influenced them to like you know put their all their eggs in that basket right. too because it is shown to pay off clearly. Like you've his, got these ten dudes from like six or seven dudes from North Carolina, who basically changed, like, changed like the landscape, the, the landscape of YouTube forever. Yeah, and now is on his way to be the second most subscribed channel, if not the first most well, subscribed T channel. T series, is T series, but no one counts. No them. one gives a shit. Yeah, whatever. Like, I don't know. Like I think about how Mr. Beast, you know, got his start, and that's going to you know his production team and being like, "Hey, did he pre did he pass PewDiePie's subscriber count?" Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We've been waiting for this moment. It's been a, it's been it's been coming. Like we've it, been waiting for this moment. It's nuts that a year ago, I think I remember playing video games or something like that with some friends and saying like, "Mr. Beast will be like the biggest YouTuber of all time. Like he's gonna be somebody that like will." I feel like I realized that three years ago, like when in the pandemic, when he right. was just pumping. That's up. what I guess he didn't slow down. Yeah, I guess he that's what I meant. Out. 2020, like early 2020, I was in Arizona for like a, a spring break trip with my yeah. dad, and we were playing golf. And I remember seeing like a TikTok of him because Mr. Beast played baseball, mm -hmm. so like he he it was a, a video of him hitting dingers, and I was just like, this dude could do anything. Like he literally sets his mind to something and he does it. And I love that. And I like, don't see anybody surpassing him. Mm -mm. Not for years. To I go. mean, everybody in the world would love to. Like, everyone just talks. Like, I love talking about things I'm good at. I, I will be the first one to tell you what I'm good at. But I definitely know for a fact that there are so many things that he is better at than me. There's one person that I could see coming close, and that's Dream. Dream. But that's it. He's, he's, he, I feel like the face reveal fucked everything oh, up. Oh, you think so? A hundred percent. Because you had this mythos that you could have continued to just milk for eternity, bro. Yeah. You could, you could yeah. have traded the yeah, dream. It was too early. You could have traded the dream thing off to somebody. Like the, the, the person could change, but the mask stays the same. Sure. This could be like the Batman type of thing where like you create a mythos around the dream mask mm -hmm. and how like wearing it is like, that's the, the thing that makes the person is mm -hmm. wearing the mask, not the person behind it. Mm -hmm. Like you become the personality when you wear it. It's almost like, like you could have continued that, but I think, and I think this is the funniest thing. He was about to go to TwitchCon. So he needed to show his face so girls would be like, oh, that's Dream. I want to have sex with him because he's old enough now. It's a theory. I know my theories have been bold, pretty bold this podcast. I saw that he went to TwitchCon. Yeah, and I think it was for Poon. I think he face revealed so it's for, 
bored. I the love movie. the immediate um, comparisons that he got to uh, Shane Dawson. Oh, he looks exactly like Shane Dawson. He looks exactly like Shane. <laughs> Dawson. Except for like a like a if the troll face was integrated somewhat into his face, like a dude, little bit of a harder chisel on the yeah, chin. Dude, his chin is. He looks like Shane Dawson in like 2010. Bro, you could you could lay him on this side and like his chin is flat enough on the side where you could like cut things. Like you could you can. Yeah, he's got a sharp ass chin, dude. Bro, I, I feel bad. For for any girl that he has sex with, because he's probably putting that. If he puts it on her forehead, he's he's probably leaving oh, an wow. indent. He's <laughs> fucking stabbing her in the forehead. <laughs> stab it, he stabs. Yeah, it. he's like, oh, your your chin's in my eye. It's just <laughs> no. Nah, I I think that um also the like the the priority of where people are trying to become most popular on is kind of oh it's, it's kind of shifting from yeah. YouTube to Twitch and to to, to Discord and to tech, TikTok for sure. TikTok is probably the the most popular social media platform right now. Um, but Twitch is on its way as well. Twitch is, and um, I, I don't know, YouTube Live is, if they can integrate a little bit more. Twitch uh, and YouTube have Twitch been going qualities. hand in hand. Yeah, lately. but it's like, I can't find live streams that I want to see like yeah. as easily as I can on Twitch. Like yeah. if I want to go see uh, a YouTuber that I really like who is live streaming. I have to be subscribed to them. I have to set sure. reminders. I have to do all this stuff yeah. just so I can see because I'm not even subscribed to that many Because YouTube is subscription based. Yeah. I'm not even subscribed to that many people. And yeah. if there are a lot of people who are watching that are subscribed to more people than me, I imagine your subscription box is filled with so much shit. That's probably why TikTok is so popular because if you, not only if you watch a certain number, type of content on yeah. tiktok but if you frequently watch so say one dude's content comes up on your for you page you watch that whole video through it's gonna recommend you see that, him yeah. come through a few more times through the week eventually you basically follow that guy yeah, without even if you following don't. Him. even if you don't yep. yeah but yep. so it's like you you could watch a content creator and not be subscribed to them but by the time you or follow them sorry by the time you follow them you already are privy of their content. And 100%. so it's like, bro, I watch your videos or you follow it. No, well, you're on my for you page like every single day. What? what that's just as good. Yeah. That's like, a, Basically. That, as a content creator, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. You're, I'm going to take that too. I'm not mad at that. If I start posting clips, which I'm, you know, I've, I've racked up a few episodes. Sure. This will be episode eight. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'm going to start putting out clips and having a clips channel where like all of the podcasts just have the funny moments. And then they're just going to see this, like, you know, they're going to see you. They're going to see Straight other people up. in the podcast. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then by the time more and more episodes come through, they'll start to become. I think it's like see the content first. Obviously, TikTok is like see the content first. Get it circulating. And then your brain starts to kick in as the consumer. Yeah. That you've seen this before. And now it's coming back as like 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 um, not nostalgia, but like um, deja vu. Right. You're following them. Off of a deja vu consensus. Oh, I've seen the same TikTok a million times, but yeah. like repost it. Yeah. And exactly. it's just because like the algorithm sees that you like that video and watch it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, maybe you like it again. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, I did. But I liked it before when I hearted the video, not when somebody reposted it. Mm -hmm. I think there is that algorithm. And I, I don't know if you heard this rumor, but like TikTok in America is different than TikTok in China. Um, So TikTok in China... They like promote more successful things, like more like 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 if a high schooler does a pole vault that's our new record in Japan, like they're gonna post that and that's gonna get a million views. TikTok versus in China, it somebody can, falling it can be very like it. It can po It can it can surround a lot of like um like lo like local sports or like political mm. stuff or like um. Well, it's a very like, controlled medium. Yeah, though. it's like it's like because you got to look at social media in that in that area anyway yeah um it's it's not so freelance it's not so it's not so like i guess public what, what, what would you call that like so um widespread I widespread guess. like free like someone yeah. who's someone someone who's like in america it's a social media platform yeah versus maybe in china it could be more so of like a only this kind of content is allowed. Right. And, 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 and now it's like a influential kind of thing. Yeah, and I, 
I wonder if America has already predisposed themselves to like liking dumb stuff anyways, and it's maybe yeah. not even under the control of well, yeah. TikTok itself. Like Vine, bro. Vine, oh yeah, yeah. When 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 TikTok emerged, it got treated like like new Vine. Vine. Yeah, it like, did. So, com- comedy emerged. I mean. Still, the number one, one of the like most popular types of content on TikTok is comedy. Yeah, and so, um, that was the initial thing, and then people realized. Wait, it took a minute for people to realize, and I don't even know if it started off this way, but now TikTok's like advertisement campaign is go viral. TikTok go yeah, viral, go viral. But but when people initially realize that it could, it is easy to go viral. It's hard to say if TikTok started that campaign before or after that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But eventually it started to be recognized. I just think that now you can make anything and go, I see the stupidest stuff. Anything can go viral. And it's just a matter if somebody vibes with like the moment that happened, like that key moment that happens in a TikTok. Right. Whatever it be. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as having something, um, so funny or so, like random on your phone that you just recorded and just posting it. Yeah. And everyone that, that has that sense of com- like comedy that sees it is going to engage with it. And that's going to send it to more people who watch those kind of videos and more people who watch those kind of videos. Now you've got a bunch of people who agree on the same kind of humor. Yeah. Engaging. It's relatable. It I mean, how do, you, how do you be the, more relatable? Right. Right, exactly. So it's like 10 people who thought that video was funny out of a bunch of people who swiped past it, engage, then it sends it to 20 more and 30 yeah. more and it's like, okay. Now yep. you've got now you've got now you've got your fan base. I I, that, I was it. I loved this video that I found. It was Ted Nivison. He was like, I'm going to try to create a viral TikTok sound. And I thought that like the experiment itself was so interesting cuz mm-hmm. like Yes, anything can get popular, mm-hmm. but you have to hit the market and you have to hit that right note where people are like, oh, I can use this myself mm-hmm. too. Because what gets popular is when pe- other people use your sound. Right. And no, yeah, that's if you can make a sound, dude, you're, yeah. you're popping. So I, fa- I made a sound for for like a video of my cat and then I like used it for something else. And mm-hmm. I was like, I wonder if other people would use that. So I'll I'll even like show it in the in the video of this and like see and I'll show people that, like hey this is a way you can you know this is a sound that you can use to like make it into other things because I I could right. think of a million things to make it into mm-hmm. it's like that dude with the Chad Chin mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. he's like I'm better I'm stronger right, right 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 he's he's gone off of that now yeah but he still does the Chad face so mm-hmm. like you know you he he found his gimmick mm-hmm. bro there's. <laughs> That's goals, bro. Honestly, like, is to find a gimmick or to get viral on TikTok for a sound. It, like having a funny video go viral is, or having a great video go viral is great. But having a sound that you created and have that picked up, yeah, it starts with having a viral video, though. Yeah, it like does. you, like, like you've got to have that video that people are so highly engaged with that they're begging for you to make it into a sound, and now it's just it's there, it's there forever. Is that you? Oh, oh, it's my girl. You can you can answer it. Hey, I'm doing a podcast with Taylor. I'll call you back, babe. I wait, wave. I want to wave. Oh, you want to wave? Hi. Hello. Oh, she oh. hung up. She probably just woke up. She's like, "What are you doing?" All right. Um, I was gonna say you're about to head out, aren't you? In about. 12 minutes yeah 13 minutes okay yeah no i i appreciate you you, you even taking the time to yeah, do it. yeah no problem dude. i mean we've been talking about this for a while because i mean i have an idea for a podcast for us i'm not revealing that yet that's that's in the works <laughs> uh but the the talks of the production company are going to be real because i really do want that like mm-hmm. i'm i'm stupid passionate about creating a space that i can use not only for myself but for other people to uh I'd help. love to see that, man. There's a lot of yeah. people who need an outlet. I, I, I'm a huge advocate for people shining light on the people. Yeah. Um, and I love that you want to use your drive and talent and inspiration to to extend that. Um, someone like me who is a creative and, and, and an artist and all that first um, and a content creator second, I feel like that's something that i've been wanting to see happen and i want to promote the people that come through like if there's somebody that comes through my production 
uh, you know, my production bay or whatever it is in the future, like I'm definitely shouting them out. Right. Like that, that space that they're going to be using is going to be, you know, heavily utilized to just promote the growth. But not, I don't think it's just going to be within Minnesota. I'm hoping people from all over will come to just use it right. as, as a space, but you know, it's going to start locally. Right. Obviously. So, um, so those of you guys who are, are listening, I sure. thank you for listening to the Taylor Price podcast. <laughs> this has been episode eight with Jordan Anthony. I mean, I feel like good to have uh, me. I've been lucky to have a, a good buddy with that's creative <laughs> thank you, around the way. And you, you, you let me into your friend circle yesterday. I feel like yeah. after uh, taking some time off from hanging out with, with a lot of dudes, yeah, I, for sure. I, I spent so much time in college hanging out with girls that like <laughs> hanging out with <laughs> dudes is like, that's was, a flex. <laughs> it's so weird. I lived with four girls in college, bro. Jeez, like bro. it was nuts. I told you about that a little Don't bit. Don't let but, the wife hear that. Does she know? Yes, yeah, she does. But oh, they're okay. they're all my friends, and they were for all sure. they were all dating people. Like yeah. so, for me, it was like just a wait. And so there's an old town law in the college town I went to, where if you have more than four girls in a house, it's they classify the house as a brothel. And this is still intact now. It's still an intact law that they haven't gotten rid of in this town. Okay, give, remind me what a brothel is. Uh, basically a whorehouse. Oh, damn. Like, but where prostitutes oh, like, oh, go no. to stay. Oh, no. Right, so any, if you have five... It's pretty gr- conservative, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Pretty old town So they had to get around it on campus. So on campus, they created a dorm, a 13-floor dorm that was only girls. So that the girls weren't technically living in the same space. They were just living in rooms... Mm-hmm. That were separated by two or three, you know, girls. That's weird, right? So the, to get around that, my roommates were well. There's five girls that wanted to move into a place together, and one of them had to get, you know, the short end of the stick. Yeah, and it was the girl they didn't like. Uh, so those four girls were like, "Hey, you want to move in with us?" And I was like, "Sure, whatever." Wow, <laughs> whatever, Crazy. right? Well, thanks for having me, man. No, I appreciate I really you stopping appreciate by. It. And in the future, um, I was going to show you a few games real quick. Sure. We, we can end the podcast technically. I'm not going to stop recording, but sure. uh, I appreciate you coming by. And uh, yeah. if you guys like this video, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to all my all his socials over here. I'm going to hit for that sure. again. Yeah. So his his at is Jordan J Y R D X N at yes. um J Y R D X N uh, on Instagram, TikTok, and I. Th- I think that's it but through those socials you can find my other socials so. yes and you um, gotta hit him up on youtube and, and yeah. spotify too his music is amazing and yeah, you're gonna be hearing you. uh that before on the intro and in the outro some of your music yeah um and then we'll be looking forward to that intro song thank you man in the future. i appreciate it you're All the right. man appreciate you